don't know who I am, I just wanted to mention that this presentation is a travelogue of a trip to northern Ecuador by an amateur birder. Um, I'm not an ornithologist. I'm actually a chemist. So um, I'm, and I'm a passionate birder. It's 52 minutes and it's a movie. So I will be speaking via my film and not actively speaking. So I will put, I can actually put myself on mute, but I won't. If you have any questions, please post them to the chat room and we'll uh, try to get to them at the end. Any questions for now? Okay, I'm gonna share my screen. Does everybody see it? Yes. Excellent. And I'm recording, yes. folks, just so you know, if anyone does not want to be recorded, please turn off your video. We cannot hear the movie. You're not hearing it. No. Okay, hang on. <laughs> How about now? Yep. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Um, after some discussions, I was asked to uh, introduce Greg Miller. This is Greg Miller. And for those of you who don't know, Greg Miller was played by Jack Black in the movie of The Big Year. Um, uh, this is me over here. This is Haley. She was my roommate during this move, this uh, trip. And this is Judy. I mentioned Judy because you'll see some of her photos during this presentation. Judy, Greg, and I shared all of our photos and we intermixed them so much. We're not quite sure whose was whose. So I uh, will just say that right up front that some of them will be hers. Some will be mine. Most will be mine. And there might be a few from Greg as well. Ecuador is a country in western South America, bordering the Pacific Ocean at the equator, for which the country is named. Northern Ecuador encompasses a wide range of natural formations and climates, from the cloud forests of Mindo to the snow-capped peaks of the Andes mountain range to the plains of the Amazon basin. In elevation terms, it is from 0 to 20,561 feet, or 3.9 miles. According to the South American Classification Committee, there are 1,678 birds in Ecuador. Seven are endemic to the mainland and 30 to the Galapagos, and 102 are globally threatened. We start on the west slope in Quito. Edison Buneño is our trip leader. Quito is located within an active stratovolcano in the Andes Mountains and at 9,350 feet above sea level, it is the highest official capital city in the world. We will be staying at the Quito Hotel. They had beautiful gardens with bottle brush trees where we found the black tailed train bearer. I'm going to stop this here just to explain a couple of things with these slides in this presentation so that you're familiar with it. Um, you'll notice up here I'll have the uh, species in, in, in the English or the American or common name. It will then, I will then have the scientific name. And this one back down here is the Ecuadorian name. And if I couldn't find one specific for Ecuador, it'll be the Spanish name. If there are any other comments that I want to make in addition to my speaking, they will be down in this portion, such as 
there are over 130 species of hummingbirds in Ecuador. Common on both slopes, it can adapt well to urban ecosystems like parks and gardens. The great thrush is common in a variety of habitats throughout its wide range. It readily adapts to disturbances and can make use of urban, deforested, and agricultural areas. We all get into our limousine and head out. Our chauffeur is Jorge. Yanacocha. The reserve was established in 2001 to protect almost the entire known world population of the critically endangered hummingbird, the black-breasted puffleg. Although we did not see it, we did see our share of hummingbirds. sword-billed hummingbird. It is the only species of bird to have a bill longer than the rest of its body, about four inches. It prefers the temperate montane forest edges and gardens. This mountain velvet breast was sharing the feeder with the sword-bill, unique among high Andean hummers with its strongly decurved bill. It is widespread but not very numerous. Great Sapphire Wing. It is one of the largest hummingbirds in the world. Buff Winged Star Frontlet. Locally common on both slopes of the Andes. It prefers humid and wet forests on hillsides. One of the easiest to recognize with the buff colored epaulets. Masked Flower Piercer, one of the most common and widespread flower piercers. It is a member of the Tanager family. Tawny Ant Pitta, unlike most Ant Pittas, this one is usually easy to see. When singing, it will sometimes perch in the open. It is very common in the high mountains on either side of Quito. Golden-headed Quetzal, fairly common throughout its range in the sub-canopy of both slopes. We heard them more often than saw them. Red-crested Katinga is widespread and locally fairly common. It is usually seen alone or in pairs, perched motionless in an upright stance on top of a bush or a tree. Scarlet-bellied mountain tanager is common and very distinctive with its scarlet belly and patch behind the ear. And if you thought there were a lot of hummingbirds, there are over 170 species of tanagers in Ecuador. The common putu is a low elevation common resident. According to legend, the common putu's call is the mournful lament of a spirit in love with the distant spirit of the moon. Spectacled red start. It replaces the slate-throated red start at higher elevations, common in the temperate forests on both slopes. Think about yellow rumped warblers. Glossy flower piercer, common in the highest temperate forests, just below the tree line of both slopes. Hmm. Did I mention that there were hummingbirds?
The lodges often displayed placards like this one to identify all of the hummingbirds found at that particular lodge. Brown Inca, fairly common in lower and middle growth of the foothills of the west slope, and it favors long, tubular red flowers. Violet-tailed sylph, common on the west slope. Like most hummingbirds, they eat insects. A nesting female can capture up to 2,000 insects a day. White-necked Jacobin, widespread and found in the canopy of the forests of the lowlands, both on the east and the west slopes. They usually visit flowers of tall trees and epiphytes for nectar. Andean Emerald. This particular subspecies is found in the lowlands of the west slope. They follow trapline routes where they visit food sources on a regular and repeatable sequence. Booted Racket Tail. There are eight subspecies that are broken down into at least three groups. This one is the White Booted Racket Tail. They are generally uncommon in the foothills and subtropical forests of the west slope. Gorgeted Sun Angel, very locally common and a Chaco endemic. Chaco is an area of northwestern Ecuador and southwestern Colombia. Rufus-tailed hummingbird, common and widespread. It tolerates a very wide elevational range. They are aggressive and sometimes engage in extreme fights. They are dominant over most other hummingbirds. The green violet ear was split in 2016. The Ecuadorian species is now the lesser violet ear. Always have to keep track of these changes. Green crowned wood nymph, generally common in the lowlands of western Ecuador. It is found in forest, forest edges, and secondary growth, but avoids open scrubs. Purple throated wood star. This is an adult male showing off its gorget. This is the less brilliant female. A great example of Edison's ability to find those rarities is this tanager finch. They are vulnerable and very rare, and they are only found on the western slope of the Andes. White Whiskered Hermit. This species is another Chaco endemic. It is restricted to the lowland and foothill rainforests of western Colombia and western Ecuador. Green Thorntail. They are very small hummingbirds with very long tails. Sapphire Vented Puffleg, also commonly referred to as Long-Tailed Puffleg. It is a sedentary, non-migratory species. Velvet Purple Coronet is a Chaco endemic and rare in Ecuador. They are territorial and aggressive. I should add that we saw no Ecuadorian endemics on this trip. Refugio Paz de la Aves. We go there in search of ant pittas. They are terrestrial birds of the humid forest, most with very short tails and very long legs. Mustached ant pitta. Found only in western Pichencha and western Napo, its status is vulnerable. Suzanne was the first of the ant pittas to lose fear of humans and come to eat earthworms off the trail. She made Angel Paz very famous. Creí lo que 
ochre-breasted antpitta. This particular subspecies is endemic to northwestern Ecuador. Maria is a giant antpitta. This subspecies is found on the west slope. Its status is vulnerable. Yellow-breasted antpitta is another Chaco endemic. It seems to be found most often around streams, in ravines, and gullies. Rufous-breasted ant thrush. Ant thrushes were accorded family rank in 1999. Most tend to have short cock tails and walk like a chicken, where ant pittas hop. Cloud forest pygmy owl, uncommon and vulnerable, and threatened by habitat loss. Once considered an Andean pygmy owl, it was raised to a new species in 1999. Money may not grow on trees, but these tomatoes do. Andean cock of the rock, perhaps the most popularly recognized bird of the cloud forest of the Andean mountains. They can be quite difficult to get close to, but we had a good chance at the lek, where they usually display in the pre-dawn hours. Crimson mantled woodpecker is very handsome and widespread on both slopes. It is relatively quiet and inconspicuous as it forages along mossy epiphyte covered branches. Golden Olive Woodpecker, widespread and common, and usually feeds high in the canopy. There are about 20 subspecies, but as with many birds in Ecuador, you can find at least two subspecies separated by the high Andes. Empress Brilliant, they favor very wet, epiphyte-laden forests, but also visit feeders. In Ecuador, it is a rare Chaco endemic. Fawn-breasted brilliant. The two subspecies on both slopes are somewhat uncommon with a patchy distribution, but it is of least concern according to the International Union for Conservation of Nature. Golden-naped tanager, an Andean species often part of mixed flocks. It is found mostly in humid areas from 900 to 2400 meters. Dusky bush tanager, a rather dull tanager that is another Chaco endemic. One may ask, is it a bush tanager or a chlorus fingus? Depends on what source you are using, which is why you should pay attention to their scientific names. Golden tanager, in general, common on both slopes, but this subspecies is endemic to western Ecuador. Lemon rump tanager, common and found in western Ecuador. Another case of split, relump, and confusion. But there are two subspecies of flame rumped tanager, and this is the yellow version. Toucanets are small and short billed toucans. The crimson rumped toucanet is common on the western slope between 500 and 2000 meters in elevation. Wood creepers are a group of scansorial or climbing birds with stiff tails. The strong-billed wood creeper is widespread but not very numerous. 
Ara Sari are slender toucans with long bills and long graduated tails. The pale mandible Ara Sari is common in western Ecuador. They mainly eat fruit, but also bird eggs and lizards. Toucans are big, showy, and conspicuous. As the name implies, the Chaco toucan is a Chaco endemic. It sings with its head up, swinging in an arc from side to side. We all watched for the zeros on my altimeter as we passed over the equator. Rusty margin flycatcher, a common and widespread neotropical species. Oil bird, highly nocturnal, it usually roosts in caves. Although the oil bird forages by smell, using a series of sharp for this purpose. We leave the western slope and head east over the Andes. It is in the remote highlands of the Antisana National Park where we will find one of my targets, the Andean condor. Andean condors can be seen soaring at elevations up to 15,000 feet. Its wingspan is over 10 feet. Their population is decreasing and they are now listed as vulnerable. Its greatest threats are mass poisonings and lead poisoning. We will find many birds in the high Andean Paramore, above 11,000 feet. Andean lapwing is locally common in the high Andean bogs and wetlands. They are very noisy and often spotted by their cries. Their population is stable. Carunculated caracara, uncommon. Its name comes from the wrinkled appearance to its facial skin. They are often seen walking on the ground, searching for carrion or virtually any small animal to feed on. Plumbius sierra finch, generally common in the open and grassy high altitude habitats. Stout-billed synclotus, a terrestrial, high-elevation fernerid found in the paramo, uncommon to frequent. White-capped dipper. They like fast flowing mountain streams. It is the most widespread of the two South American dippers found in the Andes from Venezuela down to Bolivia. Torrent tyrannulate, widespread but uncommon in Ecuador. They move restlessly amidst mossy rocks and boulders along high elevation rushing streams. The torrent duck is declining due to competition for its invertebrate food from introduced trout, pollution, forest destruction, and damming of the mountain rivers for hydroelectric schemes.
turquoise jay, fairly common and found in humid montane evergreen forests and elfin forests on both slopes of the Andes. Magpie tanager, conspicuous, noisy, and behave a bit like jays. orange-bellied euphonia, the most widespread Ecuadorian euphonia in humid regions on both east and west sides. Green honeycreeper, a common tanager of humid tropical lowlands. Contrary to its name, only about 20% of their diet is made up of nectar. The rest is mostly fruit and seeds. Flame-faced tanager, a common member in mixed-species foraging flocks in the canopy of humid montane forests. Blue-winged mountain tanager, fairly common and widespread on both slopes. A core member of mixed-species flocks and can be found in forests, edges, and gardens. Lacrimose mountain tanager. It is named for the yellow teardrop below the eye. It is common and conspicuous in the temperate forest and woodlands of the east slope. Swallow tanager. Widespread but seasonal. They have a swallow-like flight from high exposed branches and they nest in sandbanks, tree holes, and wall crevices. Pale-edged flycatcher, named for the white edges to the outer tail feathers. It is restricted entirely to the humid montane forests. Cinnamon flycatcher, common and conspicuous in the Andean cloud forests on both slopes. Band-bellied owl, they are very secretive, scarce, and local in the subtropical zone east of the Andes. One reference called them unsociable. Can you believe it? More hummers! Long-tailed sylph the male's tail feathers are so long that they hinder his flight. Thus, the females choose the male with the longest tail, therefore ensuring that they are mating with the fittest male. Bronzy Inca is one of the drabest hummingbirds. It is uncommon on the east slope. They visit flowers on a trap line route. Wire crested thorntail uncommon and listed as threatened on the east slope. It is a monotypic species, meaning that there are no subspecies. Brown violet ear, scarce and erratic. All violet ears have a distinct violet ear patch, which can flare out as an aggressive gesture. Booted racket tail. You notice the eastern race have buff boots? 
Some now consider this a new species, the Peruvian racket tail. Black-throated brilliant, solitary, scarce, and local on the eastern lowlands. They generally forage at heights about two to four meters. Tourmaline sun angel. They are territorial hummingbirds that favor dense, mossy cloud or elfin forests. They usually occur above 2,300 meters. Glowing puff leg. Note the large white puffs at the base of the legs. They are uncommon in the temperate zone of the east slope and are very defensive of their flowers. Coronets are short-billed hummingbirds of the montane forests. The chestnut-breasted coronet frequents the canopy of humid forests and is sedentary in its range. Although they like nectar, they will hawk for insects. Speckled hummingbird, common and widespread on both slopes. They are solitary and often found at flowers in thickets along trails. Mini spotted hummingbird, an uncommon hummingbird on the east slope of the Indian cloud forest. It feeds on both nectar and insects. Gould's Jewel Front, uncommon and inconspicuous in the lowlands of the east, forages quietly in the understory and are less aggressive and territorial than other hummingbirds. Green Hermit, it has the typical hermit long curved bill, locally common in the undergrowth of montane forests of the foothills of the east slope, often near streams. Deep Blue Flower Piercer, uncommon in the upper tropical zone of the East Slope. Look at that eye. It is no wonder that it is also known as the Golden Eyed Flower Piercer. Olive Backed Wood Creeper, frequent in the subtropical zone. It forages in the mid-story and sub-canopy of humid montane forests, often in the company of mixed species flocks. Gilded Barbette. New World Barbettes are close relatives to Tucans. They can be found in a variety of habitats from forest edges to mature rainforests. Red-headed Barbette. Uncommon. Usually found in pairs, often accompanying a mixed species flock in the forest canopy on both slopes. The males are really spectacular. Inca jay. To many, it is still a subspecies of the green jay. They are common in tropical to temperate zones. Like our jays, they can be pretty raucous with a wide repertoire of calls. Mini banded arasari. Uncommon, they are often seen perched conspicuously on a snag or foraging in fruiting trees. Black Street Puffbird, uncommon. Puffbirds are very secretive, some say even lethargic, so they are very hard to find when they are not calling. Fork-tailed Flycatcher. This bird has the longest tail relative to body size of any bird on earth. The male's tail is two to three times longer than the length of the bird from bill to the base of the tail. Yellow-cheeked Bacard. Locally common in clearings with tall trees on the east slope, they are solitary and rarely join mixed flocks. Black Caracara. Caracara are actually in the falcon family. 
and will eat almost anything from carrion, insects, frogs, to fruit. San Isidro Owl is an avian enigma that we observed at the San Isidro Lodge. Some think it is a hybrid between the black banded owl and black and white owl, but it occurs at a higher elevation than either of them. Masked Tetaira, fairly common but below 1100 meters, usually found in fruiting trees. Rufus Matmat, non-migratory and nests in a 13 to 16 foot long tunnel in a bank or in the sides of a mammal burrow. Broad-billed Matmat, as with other Matmats, they wag their racket tails as a warning mechanism. Masked Trogan uncommon in the lower or middle moist montane forests between 1,500 and 3,000 meters of both slopes of the Andes. Yellow tufted woodpecker, sometimes called the harlequins of the forest canopy. They prefer dead trees or tall dead stubs. In Coca, we will exchange our bus for boats and ride down the Rio Napo. It is here where we will swap over to our paddle boat that will take us to the Napa Wildlife Center. Watson. It's a really bizarre but common bird, and genetic research has indicated that it is the last surviving member of a bird line that branched off in its own direction 64 million years ago. The Napa Wildlife Center was developed, built, and is 100% managed by the Kichwa and Nyangu community. It is located within the Yusani National Park. The preserve is about 2.5 million acres of Amazon rainforest. Everything is brought in and out on these paddle canoes. Zigzag heron, 
are reclusive birds, staying well hidden in thick cover, even when foraging. It is another one of my targets. Sun grebe are also very secretive birds that live on quiet streams among thick vegetation. It is the only member of its genus. White-winged swallows are numerous and conspicuous near water of the eastern lowlands. The ringed kingfisher is the largest kingfisher in the Americas and likes to hunt from a perch near water in heavily wooded areas. Like other puffbirds, the collared puffbird employs a sit and wait strategy for hunting. This tower is 125 feet tall with 207 steps, but there are no facilities up there. So if nature calls, you must go down and then climb those 207 steps again. What a view! black-headed parrot, fairly common in the canopy of eastern lowlands. What a beauty! The scarlet macaw is fairly common at this preserve, but overall numbers are decreasing due to illegal parrot trade and loss of habitat. Crimson crested woodpecker a large resident woodpecker found in the forests of the lowlands. Spangled Cotinga. My photo just doesn't do justice to this beautiful bird. I learned that they are hunted for their feathers to be used as fishing flies and lures. Slate collared hawk, scarce. It is a generalist forager with recorded prey items including snakes, frogs, small monkeys, and birds. Lettered Arasari. Its name comes from the black letter-like markings on its bill. Olive or a pendola. These huge birds are in the blackbird family and are restricted to the Amazon basin. White necked puffbird. Once considered a subspecies of the Guianan puffbird, it was separated in 2004. Greater yellow headed vulture has a highly developed sense of smell and soars over large tracts of undisturbed lowland forests in Amazonia. King vulture lacks a developed sense of smell, so it depends on other vultures to lead it to food, but its large size and powerful bill then allows it to dominate at a carcass. Bicolored hawk Although uncommon or rare, it is the most common exhibitor in most of its range. A celebratory picture. White Lord Euphonia. It's also known as the Golden Bellied Euphonia and is common in Amazonia. It forages in the canopy of mature forests. 
wire-tailed mannequin. Like all mannequins, they are quite inconspicuous, more often seen when displaying. Although you cannot see where its name came from in my photo, you can from this photo. <laughs> Orange crested mannequin is rather dull for a mannequin. They are scarce and local in the lower growth of Varzia forest. Great Tinamou, near threatened species, but widespread in Ecuador's eastern lowlands. Giant otters are endangered, but thanks to the conservation efforts of the Quechua Anangyu indigenous community, the local population has been able to thrive. Because of their size, which is greater than two meters, they compete successfully with jaguars and fully grown caiman for food in their natural habitat. Red-capped cardinal, most commonly encountered low near the water along rivers and oxbow lakes. Social flycatcher, common throughout the neotropics. Limpkin. Although we see these in St. John's County, this one is actually a different subspecies. They look a little bit different, but they sound the same. Striated heron. I bet you thought this was a green heron. Well, to some, it is also called the green back or the green heron. Like I mentioned, you must pay attention to its scientific name. Boat billed heron. They are common in fresh or brackish wetlands of Amazonia. Although you cannot easily see where it got its name again from my photo, check this one out in Wiki. Brown Nunlet. Nunlets are a part of the puffbird family. It is scarce and found in the eastern lowlands. White Chinned Jacamar prefers areas near water, such as these Varzia forests. Varzia forest, which is a seasonal floodplain forest inundated by whitewater rivers that occur in the Amazon River Basin. Yellow-browed toady flycatcher is considered a super species. They are species that diverged from one another in isolation rather recently and have remained largely or entirely geographically separated, with the painted toady flycatcher of Guiana and the black-headed toady flycatcher in Central America. Violaceous jay, fairly common and widespread. They forage in flocks in forest <coughs> canopy. They rarely linger in one spot for very long. They are noisy and conspicuous. Great Putus. Putus are well known for their ability to blend in with the tree on which they are sleeping.
cobalt-winged parakeet. Along our boat trip, we stopped at a clay lick to find these common and widespread parakeets. I think you can guess where their name came from. Collared plover, common resident along the rivers in the lowlands. This is my best photo of the ladder-tailed nightjar, although it was flying about trying to distract us from its nest. Brown-chested martin, conspicuous but not very numerous resident of the eastern lowlands. Where the gray-breasted martin is the most common martin in Ecuador. Greater Ani. This huge ani is locally abundant along rivers and lakes from Panama to northern Argentina. Where the smooth-billed ani is the most common and widespread ani in South America. You can also find a few of these in Florida. Cream-colored woodpecker is an unmistakable yellow woodpecker of the eastern lowlands. We watched the sunset in the canopy to say farewell, for tomorrow we will depart. Capped heron, uncommon but conspicuous. It is about the size of the snowy egrets. One last one at the Quito Hotel. Black flower piercer, widespread and numerous, especially in gardens. For the curious, the group tallied 502 species. I saw 495, 311 of which were lifers, and I had a total of 61 hummingbirds. Thank you.